on Zoom. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Is this it? Yeah. And this is our opening song. We're a little taller than Anne. <laughs> Dear refuge of my weary soul. Oh. Winds of those rise on the when waves of trouble roll, my fainting hope relies to thee I tell each rising grief for thou alone can steal. Thy word can bring us sweet relief For every pain I feel But oh, when gloomy doubts prevail I fear to call thee mine The springs of comfort seem to
Behold, the dwelling of God is with us. God will dwell with us, and we shall be God's people, and God will be with us and be our God. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah to us, a child is born. Come, let us adore him. Let's say the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Deacon Jan, do you wanna lead us in the Psalm? I will. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. The Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed, Somebody like to unmute and read Jeremiah? I can't see everybody, so just go for it. The Old Testament lesson. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I can do it. Okay. And thus, uh, uh, it's a lesson from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping, they shall come. And with consolations, I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him keeps going they shall come and sing aloud on the height of zion and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the lord over the grain the wine and the oil and over the young of the flock and the herd their life shall become like a watered garden and they shall never languish again 
Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Jane, would you like to read Ephesians? Letter to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. Deacon Jan. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. The parents of Jesus went to Jerusalem every year for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all of these things in her heart, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Given the horror of these past three days, it's daunting for me to know what to say this morning. When bad things happen to good people, all of our carefully constructed theology crumbles quickly away. I can offer thanks for the blessing that we are all alive today, that our church is still standing, that St. Ambrose parishioners didn't lose their homes. I am so deeply grateful, but there are many buildings and livelihoods that are indeed lost. Why didn't the inhabitants of those houses receive such a blessing? I can point to the helpers and give thanks for their efforts as Mr. Rogers teaches us to do. That's a helpful step, 
but it doesn't let God off the hook. I can get angry about climate change and help us to point fingers at one another, but that doesn't heal our grief. I could say that we shouldn't worry so much about losing our possessions, that they are only things, but our homes are reflections of ourselves. They hold our memories. They are indeed precious to us, deep down in our souls. I could even take a cue from the televangelists and say that God is punishing us for our collective sins or teaching us some lesson that we need to learn. But that's just plain bad theology. Who wants to worship a mean-spirited God like that? The loving God of Jesus Christ is not a vindictive, abusive parent. What I can easily say today is that we are both thankful and grieving. We're both fearful and angry. We're both relieved and daunted by what lies ahead. I believe that the people of Israel in our first reading today would understand our feelings quite well. They too have lost everything. They've been carried into exile away from their homes. What does Jeremiah say to them? He paints them a beautiful word picture, a picture of a redeemed creation. The Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him, Jeremiah proclaims. Perhaps we too need to hear of redemption today. What is redemption though? Isn't that what you do with your sky miles to get a free trip? The language of redemption comes from the Hebrew scriptures. In the ancient world, you could redeem a prisoner by paying a ransom to his captors. You could also legally redeem a piece of land by paying the debt on it. You could even redeem a woman. That's what happens in the biblical story of Ruth. Her husband dies and she finds Boaz, one of her husband's next of kin. According to the law at the time, she convinces him to redeem her taking her from the life of poverty and rejection, that's the lot of the widow, by making her his wife. When the Hebrew scriptures talk about God as redeemer, however, the metaphor moves away from the idea of involving a literal payment. Without any money exchanging hands, without any legal contracts being drawn up, God promises over and over to redeem the people of Israel. Take a look at our lesson from Jeremiah. Redemption here is described as a kind of liberation for the whole community. It's liberation for the blind, the lame, for those who are normally excluded from the group, for pregnant women, children, the weak, for people from every corner of the land all together. Together, they'll be lifted from the suffering that has oppressed them as an exiled and defeated people. God will release them from hands too strong for them to lift from their own hunched shoulders. God will set them down to walk on smooth paths along brooks of water. The redeemed people will dance and sing together. Redemption in Jeremiah reminds me of singer Bob Marley's Songs of Freedom, Redemption Songs. I especially like Jeremiah's image of the watered garden, especially after watching firsthand the terrible result of the drought that plagues us in the West today. Their life shall be like a watered garden, the prophet says of the redeemed community. I can see God bending over our dry and withered souls with a watering can in the early morning light. 
I can imagine God pouring the life-giving water of love and forgiveness deep into the tangled roots of our common humanity day after day. I can imagine us growing imperceptibly taller, faces turned toward the sun, branches intertwined and tendrils touching, more and more ready to bear fruit. In this image, God is redeeming us by tending us, by giving us what we need to grow together into what we are called to be day after day. I can also imagine Jesus as the bearer of this kind of divine redemption. We human beings are fragile plants, born today and gone tomorrow, tossed about and ripped by powerful winds too strong for us to bear. We feel that truth keenly today. God, however, comes down into the garden with us in the face of Jesus. Jesus puts his whole trust in his father's love, even in the frightening presence of death. Jesus loves us more than he loves his own life. With Jesus, the life-sapping powers of this world hold no sway. He lives and dies as part of the world, submitting to death at the hands of powerful oppressors. And yet he lives. He rises in glory. In his living, dying, and rising, Jesus redeems us from the lie that we live alone in the desert. Jesus waters us with the life-giving truth of our unbreakable relationship with God. Christian redemption puts humankind back in right relationship with God. It trades in fear for love. It trades in coercion for love. It happens in the life-giving garden of the Christian community, in the all-inclusive community gathered around their crucified and risen Lord. The story of redemption promised in Jeremiah, in our Psalm and in Ephesians today, lifts my trembling heart. The watered garden sparks my longing. The love of the baby who is God with us gives me courage. But it's not just about me or about you as an individual. It's about us. God's freeing action involves us in the intricate process of relationship. If we don't come together to show love to our siblings on earth, then how will anyone know that we are redeemed? Redemption changes our lives. It waters, it rebuilds, it offers comfort with open arms. I can define redemption for you, but it's up to us as a community to make it visible in our burned and suffering world. Amen. To continue the family uh, participation here, just a little meditation from Don's son, John. Ethan. Jonathan. <laughs>
Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Deacon Jan, do you want to lead us in the prayers? Absolutely. Holy God, <clears throat> Holy God, creator of heaven and earth. Have mercy upon us. Holy and mighty, redeemer of the world. Have mercy upon us. Holy immortal one, sanctifier of the faithful. Have mercy upon us. Holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, one God. Have mercy upon us. Hear our prayers, O Christ, our God. O Christ, hear us. Console all who grieve, those whose homes have been destroyed, whose possessions have been ruined, who are now unemployed. O Christ, hear us. Heal those who suffer from injury and illness, emotional and spiritual distress. Give them hope and encouragement to meet the days ahead. O Christ, hear us. Give food to the hungry and drink to the thirsty. O Christ, hear us. Give rest to the weary and peace to the restless. O Christ, hear us. Give strength to the governor of Colorado and all others in authority and leadership. Grant them wisdom and power to act in accordance with your will. O Christ, hear us. Bless Bishop Kim and all clergy who strive to do your service in the midst of their own grief and pain. Give them fortitude to serve you as you would serve. O Christ, hear us. Grant your people grace to witness to your word, to open their hearts in love, and to give generously from their abundance that they may bring forth the fruits of your spirit. O Christ, hear us. In the midst of incomprehensible loss, grant us eyes to see, ears that hear, and hands that work so that we may discern how you would have us respond. O Christ, hear us. We give you thanks, Lord God, for all agencies and individuals who assist in relief efforts. Continue in them the good work you have begun, that through them your presence is made known. We thank you, Lord. And please add your own intercessions and thanksgivings, either aloud or silently. For the Austin family. I'd like to give thanks for the 
men and women in the fire department and law enforcement who worked so hard to, to help our community. Amen. For Phil Kuffner, Lord, and his neighbor Dave, helped them to recover in the hospital. And for Vicki and, and the rest of the family, they totally lost their homes. Prayers for my family as nine of us have COVID, and as well. Um, for me, as I have an infusion of antibodies this afternoon, that all will be well. I want to give thanks to my granddaughter. She was able to find my daughter and I um, a hotel room in Brighton when we were told to evacuate. We had a place to go. We're so grateful for everyone's help and grateful that we had a place to come home to. I pray for the five people, for the five people who are still missing, that they would be evacuated somewhere rather than lost in the rubble. You are in strength. Our very present help in trouble. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever. Amen. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Compassionate God. Draw near to us in this time of sorrow and anguish. Comfort those who mourn. Strengthen those who are weary. Encourage those in despair. And lead us all to fullness of life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We do have some things to celebrate around here, I guess. So any birthdays to celebrate today, you'll have to shout it out if you do. This is Kathy Reed. My mom, Jean, turns 96 on Tuesday. Good. Well, we will pray for Jean. Anybody else? Our, our grandson, Derek, turns six um, tomorrow. Oh. Good. Okay. Six. Jean, 96 and six. <laughs> Jean and Derek. Anybody else? All right. Let us pray for them. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on your servants, Jean and Derek, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Any anniversaries? If we could pray for my children's godparents, Carol and Harry, who just celebrated yesterday their um, 57th anniversary. Oh, my. Okay. Carol and Henry. So I got the Harry. Name. Harry. Carol and Harry. All right. Almighty God, giver of life and love. Bless Carol and Harry. Grant them wisdom and devotion in the ordering of their common life, that each may be to the other a strength in need, a counselor in perplexity, 
a comfort in sorrow and a companion in joy. And so knit their wills together in your will and their spirits in your spirit, that they may live together in love and peace all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we'd have travel. I know there might be specific people traveling, but we can also pray this for everyone traveling um, to find a place to stay. Yes. My daughter, Rebecca, and her husband, uh, Marcus, and their baby, Charlotte, are traveling back to Des Moines, Iowa today. Oh, wow. Okay. So Randy's daughter and her family. Hi, I'm Lorraine. Can yes. you hear me? Yes. Um, my my niece is flying back uh, at one o'clock today to Hawaii, where she lives. Okay. And her parents, my sister and brother-in-law, Angie and Lenny, lost their home in the fire. Oh, my. Oh my. And, um, but she's going home today to go back to work and school. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Shoot. So, so Mia, her name is Mia. Yeah. Okay. Mia, Randy's daughter's family. Anybody else? Yes. I, I'm taking a short trip to Salida this afternoon to be on retreat for a few days. Silent Good. retreat. Good. Good for you. All right. We will pray for you, Sarah. Uh, hi, this is Christy. Nicole and Trevor are driving from Tucson to Ventura today. All right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop and I'm going to let all you who just gave me <laughs> prayers put them in there because I'm too senile to remember everybody's name. So here we go. Oh, God, our heavenly father, whose glory fills, fills the, whole the whole creation and whose presence and we, presence we find, find wherever we go. We go. Preserve, Preserve those who travel, travel, especially... Uh, Marcus, Rebecca, and Charlotte. So, Mia. Mia. And Christy's family. Nicole and Trevor. Yes. And any others? <laughs> Surround them with your loving care. Protect them from every danger. And bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you've promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, even on Zoom, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And Don is going to sing, uh, God, our help in ages past for us. And if you're muted, you can sing along. Oh, God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home. Under the shadow of thy throne, thy saints have dwelt secure. Sufficient is thine arm alone and our defense is sure. Before the hills in order stood, or earth received her frame, from everlasting thou art God, to endless years the same. O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Be thou our God while troubles last, and our eternal home.
May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our worship has ended. Let me stop share. And you all are uh, invited to, oh, I need to stop recording just a minute. <laughs> You're invited to stay um, around and 